Whisper fires 30% of their staff. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee because, well, another tech company has fired a significant number of staff. This time, it's an Australian one and it's, it's Whisper, apparently. Australian tech company Whisper sacks 30% of staff. Now, I've never heard of them, but that doesn't mean anything, does it? It just means I'm old. The Australian outfit slashed 30% of its workforce as it was hit by a slowdown post-pandemic with its shares diving by 70% this year. Wow. Okay, so let's jump over here. Let's have a look at their website. Whisper, what is it? Um, communicate with people like people. Okay, and I'll, I'll accept your cookies. Better communication is better for everyone. Yeah, I mean, what does it do? Automated intelligence, okay, so um, communication bots, workflows. So, yeah, we'll have to have to see. It doesn't really look like anything that's jumping out at me now. It's used by some of the businesses we trust. Okay. So, yeah, I, I can see there being a huge uptick in this business during the lockdowns. And, well, we saw that with so many businesses where during lockdowns they did quite well. They were busy they were flat out and they thought that that was the new norm so of course they grow to deal with that and then reality hits life goes back to normal and it's not quite the same is it an australian tech company has revealed it has let go of 30 percent of its workforce and is slashing costs elsewhere in a move designed to deliver 14.3 million in savings a year whisper a cloud-based communications tech company that offers a platform for everything from crisis management to marketing and is listed on the ASX, has faced difficulties as with its share value plummeting by 70% this year. You know what? Let's look up. Let's, do they have, hang on. Do they have an investor center on their website? They don't really seem to. Um, resources. I'm just looking over here. You know what? Let's just look up their share price. So what is it? Whisper share price. Whisper ASX. Oh boy. So it's 58 cents. And let's go to the max. Oh yeah. So when did it just list in 2019? Here you go. Up to $4.72 in 2020. So it, it, it was a nice one. It's been around since 2,155 employees. And there you go. Look at that. And does she pay a dividend? No, of course not. Does it make a profit? We'll have to see. Let us know in the chat, guys, if you invested in Whisper and if you made some nice, healthy gains. The cost-cutting measures have seen 80 staff let go as part of a plan to establish itself as a profitable growth business, Whisper CEO Jeremy Wells said. With around 70% of the impacted roles based in Australia and New Zealand in the product and technology divisions. I mean, this is what you have to do. We saw it with Superdraft. They collapsed because they probably held on to their people too long. They didn't cut to the bone when they needed to. And this is what they're doing. These are the tough decisions you have to make in business to keep it going. And this is why whenever anyone tells you business is like a we're like a family, it's bullshit. Okay? That's that's it's it's a business relationship. It's not like a family. The announcement saw its share price surge by thirty one point three percent on Tuesday closing 15 cents higher at 65 cents, although by Wednesday it had dropped by 8% to 60 cents, and right now it's 58 cents. You know, I might bring up my self-wealth, and we might have a look at some of the data here from them. Yeah, let me just log in while we keep reading this. So Whisper had seen a boom in demand for its services during the pandemic as government agencies looked to use its system to communicate with citizens who were co in were close contact or quarantine. But since then, revenues has dropped. So, yeah, so it was a bit of a flash in the pan, flash in the pan success. And I'm just looking at Whisper Limited. Let's have a look here. Okay, and we'll see some 
I'll jump over here. Oh, wait, no, I'll, I'll bring this over here to you guys to see. So it's 58 cents now. It's apparently undervalued by 126%. You can see um, the volume is pretty decent. Let's have a look at... Okay, so most people are selling. It's 314th by ownership on the self-wealth community, 623rd by weight. Well, it's, you know, market cap's pretty low. We can see it's six-month performance isn't doing too well. And here, these are the forecasts. So a high of $1.70, a low of $1.02. And it's slightly towards a buy, but the, most of the people are bullish on it. So, I mean, yeah. What else? Where's the ESG rating, guys? We need we need to know their ESG rating. What's in the news? Um, Whisper Post record gains on internal restructure. So the share price jumped, as we're saying, because... Well, they fired a bunch of people, so they need to be profitable. They need to be profitable. What are the ratios? Market depth, we can see here. So uh, 79 buyers for 748,000 units and 45 sellers. And that's where they're meeting. So not, mm, yeah, if you're trying to buy down at 51 cents. So the company has been through a period of significant growth which means that there are now areas that can be scaled back to pre-COVID levels for a period as the company transitions to growing sustainably and profitably without the need for additional capital, Mr. Wells added. Well, that's what you want. I mean, this is just, just reality, guys. The pandemics, the demand for their business artificially inflated, so they're cutting back. Team members impacted by the cuts would have access to career assistant, assistance, job placement support, and our employee assistant programs, he added. The restructure would cost the company a total of 1.8 million, which represents an average of 22,500 per staff member, but would mean the company would see its cash flow break even in the third quarter of next year, a move up from, uh, from the 2024 financial year. Part of the cuts would also include scaling back its investment in research and development, and the company would move to a self-funded model long-term, it said. With cash reserves of $17.1 million, the business will not need to raise capital to fund its ongoing operations and positions, positions the company to maintain a strong balance sheet, Whisper said in a statement to investors. Experts had flagged that Whisper's largest customer contributed $12.7 million revenue in the la latest last financial year, with $9 million expected to be just a one-off, while the company also revealed that revenue in Australia had dropped. So that that's that's a big chunk of money coming from one client. It comes as the tech sector has taken a battering both internationally and locally. Last week, global payment service provider Stripe sacked 14% of its workforce, impacting around 1120 staff. After being heralded as Silicon Valley's most valuable startup last year with a valuation of 95 billion. Yeah, well. Well-known players in the sector have also flagged thousands of job cuts. Meta, formerly Facebook, revealed it would let go of 13% of its workforce, adding up to 11,000 staff in the first round of redundancies in the company's history recently. Meanwhile, Amazon was set to fire 10,000 employees in coming weeks in corporate and technology roles, while Twitter's new billionaire owner, Elon Musk, has also brutally slashed its workforce. And at Microsoft, at least 1,000 people have been let go. Global streaming juggernaut Netflix also sacked roughly 450 staff out of its 11,000 worldwide talent pool in two rounds of layoffs in May and June. Yeah, but I mean, we've got to remember, Amazon's got over a million staff, guys. So I mean, the, the, the point of concern here is that they're not growing for once. Australia's tech sector has also been hit hard as investing and revenue dries up. Brisbane-based telecommunications and IT infrastructure company Megaport sacked around 10% of its staff in August, despite announcing its revenue had jumped by 40% to $109.7 in the past financial year. Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything went good last year, social or in the last couple of years. Social media increased. YouTube views increased. You know... Now we're getting, what, 200,000 a month in the channel. Back in the lockdowns, we were getting 600,000 viewers a month on the channel. That's just how crazy it was. 
it was just going nuts. Meanwhile, social media startup Linktree, which was valued at $1.78 billion, sacked 17% of staff from its global operations. Such a simple thing worth so much. It's about getting the market share, I guess. Australian healthcare startup Eucalyptus, that provides treatments for obesity, acne, and erectile dysfunction. So what, they just feed people meat? Is that... Because look it up, guys. That's that's the treatment for all of those things. You know what? Uh, let's look up eucalyptus. I've never heard of them. Let's look them up. Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. What a plant. Um, okay, so we dream, build, and run digital healthcare companies. Healthcare technology company. Pilot men's healthcare, women's fertility. Sexual wellness. Um, what's pilot? What a, what a bloke's need. We, we suck at healthcare. Weight loss. Okay. Come on. I, I, need, to I need to lose weight. You know? Um, what is all this? Oh, okay. Um, cool. Monthly treatments. Yeah, What what is it? How does it work? Diet and exercise. Well, yeah, pretty much is. Developed for diabetes and approved for weight loss. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I want to know what the program is. Um, anyway. Oh, introduces clinically proven hunger-regulating medications. Poppin' pills, guys. So there you go. This is this is the problem. You've got a whole industry, and I know I'm going off topic here, but it pisses me off. Where it's rather than uh, training people to eat healthier and avoid the stuff that's causing all of the problems, all the modern processed shit, all the sugar, all the carbohydrates, medicating people. I mean, cigarettes used to medicate people for for diet. Too bad, they have side effects. Anyway, yep, there you go. So they fired 20% of their staff after investment form pulled its funding at the last minute. Well, I feel sorry for the people there that are losing their funding. Um, I mean, I've invested in uh, Sean Baker's company that's looking at providing uh, healthcare based on meat. <laughs> so that's, that's what I've invested in. So there's my, my bias right through there. So guys, let's have a talk about this. This is a similar story we're hearing again and again where businesses ramped up to deal with the huge increase in demand and they probably had to and things are now returning back to normal. So, I mean, it's good that life's returning back to normal. It's not as crazy as it was. We're actually having meetings in person and events in person again. Isn't that great? But it's... Well, some people are going to have to shift to another opportunity. That's just part of life. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan, check out Heiser Bim and Heiser Says International for other topics I discuss. And if you want to support the channel, you can financially on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links, buy a pocket squares, or call us if you need an architect. Take care, guys. Have a great day. And seriously... Try, try looking at a carnivore diet to deal with your erectile dysfunctions before you start popping some pills. I mean, give that a shot. What do you got to lose? And this is speaking from a father of six kids.